Okay, today we're going to attempt the first flight in this, the Monster de Bruce. So the question is, how is that turboprop going to perform on this aircraft? Is it going to change the characteristics? <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Sarah Henry, Steve's daughter here at Dell Aerospeed for the first flight of the Broussard turbine. Uh, so last time we visited uh, this airplane, it was November of 23. We're here not quite a year later and ready to go flying. In November, we had just worked on setting the engine on the airplane. Uh, we got the en engine mount built, very carefully set the angle, uh, both in pitch and yaw of the engine, as, as well as the uh, distance from the firewall and the height. So we're gonna find out if we did that installation correct. You know, if we, if we did our measurements right, and we put the power to it, if it wants to pull off to one side, we know we did something wrong. So that's one thing we're gonna uh, evaluate on the flights. Another thing we're going to evaluate is the third vertical and rudder. Uh, that's something new for this airframe, so a little unknown. The stock airplane is not especially stable in yaw, and when you give it full rudder reflection with level wings, it actually rudder locks, so the rudder stays over, and it takes, you have to force it back to center, so we'll find out if that tendency is still there, or if it's got away, or if now the rudder pressure is too heavy. So we're gonna evaluate that uh, vertical and rudder in the center. Uh, we've got this uh, different leading edge shape, the droop leading edge, so we'll see if that improves the wing, if it lowers the stall speed. In conjunction with that, with a lower stall speed, the question is, will the horizontal tail and elevator uh, be sufficient to actually get the airplane that slow? You know, as the, as the wing flies slower, that's great, but can the tail fly slower also? So that's something we're going to evaluate. So those are the main things, and then just, there's the probably going to be too much for this airframe. There could be some gyroscopic problems, there could be some uh, aerodynamic problems, uh, things like that. So we may have to limit the torque to less than what the engine can uh, produce at sea level. So these are all questions we're going to answer in these uh, next series of flights. Len Fox, L-E-N, F-O-X. I've come here to uh, look at what Dell has done with the Broussard, putting a Garrett engine on there. And it has almost twice the horsepower of the one uh, that was installed before, and it's a different kind. It's a turboprop now, instead of a piston. So the question is, how is that turboprop going to perform? Because we're going to have to check out the engine itself. How is it going to perform on this aircraft? Is it going to change the characteristics? Is it going to change the stall behavior? Is it going to change the handling? Uh, the ability to conduct a normal flight to a safe landing. The only reason I'm wearing a chute is for two reasons. One is controllability and fire. So if I can't control the plane, I'll bail out for a fire and I can't go on the ground soon enough, I'll bail out. Other than that, uh, we're looking to bring the plane back, to, even if it's an off-field landing, it's controllable. You'll fill it, but it'll do, it'll do, the only problem you got is if it just has too much pull and you're right. coming in, screaming in, flying too hot. Right. So. Right. And that's a possibility because yeah, that, this airplane should just land slower than that engine wants to land. Right. Hey, Jared. What's up? Looks, <laughs> looks cool. Stunning. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, excited, excited to hear it. Bad. We were wondering what you guys are doing back here. Uh, we're ballast. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Fun. Hey, Sarah. Yeah. This is where the big goggles go to hang out. That's right. Okay, Len, you can fly now. Sure, I'm quiet. It does seem quiet. I, well, 
had that thought yeah. too. It was quieter than 172. Like when I've seen these uh, uh, spray planes fly by, yeah. like you can hardly hear them. Let's see if it comes back. Oh my god, wow. he is coming back. <laughs> that <laughs> heat for short takeoff there, <laughs> brother. And it lands. <laughs> Welcome back to the ground. Okay, so we were out here a couple days ago, blended the first flight. Everything went pretty well with that. You know, I had a couple little things to look at, but good enough to decide to go fly again the next day. I, I rode along in that second flight. We tested a bunch of things, tested uh, some yaw stability. It was one of the most interesting things, basically to see if this third vertical and rudder were gonna work the way they were supposed to. Went and tested this, and sure enough, it performed better than the stock airplane. So that was, uh, that was good news. Ran through a bunch of other tests, some other stability tests. Uh, ran a test up all the way up to V&E, so all the way up to 160 knots. It took uh, nearly full power. We were a little surprised. We thought maybe it would be limited by uh, V&E before we got to full power, but for this particular day, weather, temperature, load in the airplane, it took full power to get right to V&E, so that was interesting to know. But the airplane's quiet and smooth, right on up to speed. One of the things we did before even the first flight was to tuff the top of the wing. So you can see we've got all these little pieces of yellow yarn about eight, every 18 inches. And the idea with that is to see where the stall happens and kind of just what it looks like. Specifically with this huge engine, even at, at idle, there's a fair amount of torque inducing the airplane to roll to the right. So even perfectly rigged in a stall, the right wing is going to drop every time. Now let's say you're coming in for a three point landing and let's say you misjudge and flare a little bit high. Now, the right wing drops first, now you're gonna have uh, kind of a messy situation. <laughs> but if you're two feet off the ground and both wings stall, you just plunk down on the ground, no big deal. We're going to make some additions to cause both wings to stall, stall at the same time. So with the tufts, we can see kind of where on the wing the stall starts happening. And at that location, we've got these stall strips that are installed. So it's basically just a, a piece of angle that will trip the stall a little bit sooner. So right now they're at the exact same location, left and right. So we're gonna you know, fly it with this, see that the right wing drops first, which it almost certainly will. So we, we wanna induce this left wing to stall just a little bit sooner. So we're gonna move that stall strip up a sixteenth of an inch, go fly again. Okay, that was a little better, but still right wing's dropping. Another sixteenth, another sixteenth, until we get a perfect even drop so that we can kind of come in for that three point landing and not drop a wing if we flare just a little bit high. Right now, this airplane has two pitot-static tubes. We have the original one over on the left wing, and then we've got the uh, kind of newer style. Uh, it's actually a Garmin pitot tube that also 
give some AOA information. Didn't know for sure if the Garmin tube was going to give accurate airspeed, but we were pretty confident that the stock one would because it does on the other airplane, it sticks out there in clean air. So in the cockpit, we've got the big G3X screen and the Garmin G5. Well, the stock Pedo was feeding the G5, the Garmin was feeding the G3X. Those numbers are, are identical within a knot. So we know we've got good airspeed indication on the right side, so we can take off the old pitot tube, save a little weight, a little drag, and go with just the new style pitot tube. So one of the other things we didn't know before we flew the airplane is if the engines install with the right amount of yaw offset and pitch offset, it's so like the, basically the cant of the engine. And even down to a half a degree can drastically alter how the airplane handles, especially at lower speeds, take off, go around, that sort of thing. So we set it where we thought it should be, but you don't really know until you fly it. So we flew the airplane and kind of Len's report was, everything's good there, you don't need to move it, don't need to shim it. So now that the engine location is locked in, we can fare in uh, these inlets. So I'm doing some work up here on the top to get this inlet fared in uh, with the cowl, and then doing the same on the bottom here just to get this to all match uh, nice and smooth. Wow, good job getting that right. <laughs> oh, that was, uh, J Josh was the big help on that. So you remember all the time we spent with the lasers and the levels and the fixtures, you know, all that, all that work and patience, I think, paid off because uh, we, we got it in the right position. We got the uh, augmenter tube that's coming out the bottom with the jet exhaust. The engine's thermodynamic horsepower rating is 1,050. Shaft horsepower, 900. So that extra horsepower is, kind of comes out in the exhaust. So we have, it turns out somewhere around 100 horsepower equivalent of um, power coming from this uh, exhaust. As you can see, it kind of comes out at an angle. And this angle uh, is pointed through the center of the center of the prop disc but it still feels like it induces some amount of pitch up. So when you add power, the nose wants to come up, pull power off, the nose does want to come down. Expecting some of that just with the wing cell drag being above the thrust line, but also feels like some of that is coming from the angle of this exhaust. Uh, we're not having any issue with heat on the belly, heat in the tail wheel. So I think we'd feel comfortable turning this up a little bit more, getting that exhaust uh, thrust vector a little bit more in line with the airplane and we'll probably reduce the amount of nose up pitching moment that happens with the application of power. So from some, some of the flight testing we did with the stock airplane, in addition to being marginal on yaw stability, it was uh, you know, marginal on pitch stability, which was fine for that airplane, but put this bigger cowling on, put this bigger prop in front, it could definitely tend to destabilize the airplane. In addition, we're uh, basically limited on stick travel about the same time you got to the stall, so it was aft stick limited, which is an indication that you may need more horizontal uh, stabilizer area. So for this airplane, we had the, uh, we were prepared to put on some strakes. Didn't really want to because they're kind of big and ugly and heavy, but uh, basically I had a, this set up to be able to install a strake back here to affect more horizontal tail. There's a bunch of airplanes that do this with turbine conversions. The you know original Beavers, when they put a turbine engine on it, they have some, a different style, but they have a strake back here to increase the horizontal tail. Uh, for whatever reason, this airplane doesn't seem like it's gonna need it with this engine installation. You know, maybe some really smart aerodynamist would know the exact answer why, but uh, for whatever reason, we thought we were gonna need strakes. Turns out we don't. On behalf of the whole team here at Wild West Aircraft, we want to extend our sincere congratulations to Dell and his team. It's been inspiring to watch him take this turbine brassard from concept through design and build, overcoming challenges, all the way to that first successful flight and beyond. Congratulations, Dell.